This is video number 39 in a series on arithmetic algebra and graphing. It's part 8 of a sub-series on exponents, roots, and logarithms with an emphasis on calculator usage. In the last three videos, I focused on uh, some applications involving finance to motivate uh, some things like negative exponents and fractional exponents. Then in this video, I want to focus more on just pure math, not applications. These do have applications, though, to finance, like we've seen. Other applications include things like um, things in biology, like like population growth and 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 other things in finance, like um, depreciation of automobiles, for example. But let's focus on some other things. I, I need to. Well, let me first review that in the last video or so or two, we've uh, we defined what this kind of expression mean meant. A number, a positive number, to a, a fractional power of the form 1 over m, where m is a positive integer, was defined to be the mth root of that positive number. I am going to stick to positive v's here. Um, in fact, I think I'll even just I'll even avoid zero too. So b is a positive number. What does it mean to raise b to a number, a rational number of the form b to the m over n power? What does that mean? I put the m in the numerator of that fraction now. It was in the de denominator before. Now n is in the denominator. Turns out that this is, can be defined to mean the nth root of b to the m power. Or, equivalently, the nth root of b to the n power. m and n are, are integers. And in fact, they're positive integers. I guess m could be 0, but not n. But I'll just imagine they're positive integers. Does that make sense? Is this a good definition? These are all definitions. They're not things we have to prove. We're, we're defining them to be true. It's just symbolism, if you will. It's notation. You know, why should, for example, 2 to the 3 fourths power, actually, let me pick a different example. Why should 16 to the 3 fourths power be the fourth root of 16 cubed and also uh, the fourth root of 16 quantity cubed? Why should it be equal to those things? Well, again, the, the motivation is to want the properties of exponents to continue to work even in these situations. And that would mean, for example, and it seems like I'm always using this kind of example, that would mean, for example, that if I took 16 to the 3 fourths power and raised it to the fourth power, why do I pick a 4 there? I picked a 4 there so that when I multiply the exponents, as I would want to be able to do, the 4s will divide out here and ultimately give me 16 to the third power. In other words, this thing right here that I'm raising to the fourth power really should be the fourth root, because I'm raising to the fourth power, of 16 to the third, which is exactly what this symbol means right up there. Think about that again. I'm raising this number to the fourth power. I'm getting this number. Therefore, this number that I circled should be the fourth root of this number, 16 to the third power. The fourth root of 16 to the third power is also written like that. That's motivation for why we do this definition. What does it equal? Well, it equals both of these things. This one's easier to evaluate in your head, though. The fourth root of 16 is uh, an integer. It's 2, because 2 to the fourth power is 16. So this is 2 to the third, which is 8. The answer is 8. 
It's a little harder to see it with this one because 16 to the third is pretty big. But I don't happen to know it off the top of my head. I guess I should be able to figure it out, but yeah, it's two to the two to the the twelfth power. It's four thousand ninety-six. And you'd have to experiment a little bit, thinking about powers of two, to realize the fourth root of four thousand ninety-six is going to be eight. Let's check these things on a calculator. Sixteen to the three fourths power is indeed eight. Exactly, that's an exact thing. Um, I can also check, for example, that the fourth root of four thousand ninety-six. Is also eight. Okay, you can check these things like this. What about negative powers, negative fractional powers, for example? We know what negative integer powers do. Negative fractional powers really do the same thing. If I want to find the 27 to the negative two-thirds power, what do I do? Realize that because it's a negative power, I want to think of it as 1 divided by 27 to the corresponding positive power. I made this one easy on myself as well. 27 to the 2 thirds power can be thought of as the cube root of 27 squared. Cube root of 27 is 3. 3 squared is 9. This is 1 ninth. You could also think of it, 27 to the 2 thirds power, as the cube root of 27 squared. 27 squared is 729. This is the cube root of 729, which you can check is 9. 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. Therefore, again, going back up here, the 27 to the negative 2 thirds power is 1 ninth. And in general, if you've got any fractional power that happens to be negative, which I'll emphasize by writing it like that, where m and n are positive integers, and I have a negative sign there, you can define it this way. And we've already defined what b to the m over n is. What about irrational powers? For example, what should, is that possible? What should what should 2 to the pi power mean, for example? I can't raise 2, but I can't multiply 2 by itself pi times. Pi is an irrational number. How, do you, how in the world do you find, define that? Well, let's use the approximation initially that everybody most commonly uses. 3.14 is not equal to pi. Okay, get, get that in your head. Don't ever think that 3.14 equals pi. It's just the most common approximation people use for pi. What should that mean? Maybe if I can figure out what that means, I'll be able to help me figure out what pi means, uh, 2 to the pi means. Well, 3.14 is the same as, careful here, 314 over 100. That's a fraction that can be reduced because both the numerator and denominator are divisible by 2, for example. I'm not going to bother reducing it, though I could. That's a rational number. I could say this is going to be the hundredth root of 2 to the 314th power by what I've said already in this video. Or what would probably be easier to figure out is to take the hundredth root of 2 and raise it to the 314th power. That's not going to be equal to what 2 to the pi equals, but it should be an approximation to it since pi is approximately 3.14. Let's do 2 to the 1 over 100 power first. That's the, the 100th root of 2. It's going to be real close to 1. I'm sorry. It's barely bigger than 1. That to the 314th power is this. That should be close to what 2 to the pi power is. I 
I mean, indeed, it's close. Okay, by getting better and better approximations to pi and doing this kind of thing, that's the way you would define what 2 to the pi means. Doesn't mean you could calculate it easily without a calculator, but that's you can, you can at least give meaning to it based on that approach. In the next video, we'll go into uh, summarizing all this and talking about all the properties of exponents.